I mean, I know the smell of it there, but it's still free drugs. All right, so I think um, you guys hear me. I think we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, thank you all for coming. We got a good crowd here. Um, this is exciting. Um, so it is my pleasure to introduce the first seminar of our semester. Um, this is Amy Prendergast from the um, University of South Alabama Library, and this is Kathy Wheeler. I don't know if you guys are going to both be presenting. Mostly Amy. Mostly Amy. Um, and this is intended to be interactive, so please ask lots of questions, please participate. Um, these guys are here to help us learn how to better use the library resources. Um, so after the seminar, um, I'm going to take them to lunch. If you guys want to, if anybody wants to join us, um, let me know. And then they'll stick around for a little bit if people have extra questions. Um, so I think we'll probably set up um, in the MSH conference room. Um, I'll send an email out if we end up someplace other than that. Um, so stop by and you know, introduce yourselves. And if you have any questions, if you're having trouble getting your computer set up, um, you know, they may be able to help now. But if it's more complicated or you have research things you want to talk to them about, um, you know, basically they'll be available as long as people have questions. Um, looks like Amy has cards here. So you know, you got, they're also on campus. So they'll be available um, for questions at any point. So, uh, and I'll go ahead and turn the mic over. OK. Okay, um, I am Amy Prendergast, and I'm the Science and Technology Librarian at the Marks Library, which means I am your librarian. You can think of me as your personal librarian. Um, I do have some cards available um, if you want to grab one, and um, I, I'm, I'm delighted to help people one-on-one. -on -one. Um, in fact, actually, that's probably my preference. Uh, I'm not a stand in front of the room and talk a lot kind of girl, mostly, but um, I'm glad to do it for this occasion. And as Kelly said, if you have any questions, feel free to speak up, and we'll, um, I'll, I'll answer them as I go. And my colleague, Kathy Wheeler, is currently our collection development librarian, and she used to be our electronic resources librarian. So she's good with tech questions, and she's good with content and collection type questions. So hopefully between us, we can, um, we can dissolve any mysteries about the library resources through the Marx Library at the University of South Alabama. OK, this is our web page. And um, since all, most of y'all are uh, out, way out here and not on campus, probably most of your, um, your dealings with the library will be through the web page. Um, and since those of you who have your laptops, if you want to follow along, if you, you can just go to library.southalabama.edu. Um, we have a, a longer, more complicated URL now, but it, the old one will still redirect. OK. Um, the main thing um, on our page, as you can see, is the, um, the search box for OneSearch. And OneSearch is a, um, a federated search. It searches um, m many, if not all, of our databases. So um, some of you may be familiar with it already, but I'm going to start just to make sure everybody knows um, all the possibilities having to do with it. Um, and I came up with a search, like you see there, that um, will allow me to demonstrate some of the things that um, 
that I want to show. But if anybody has a search that they would like me to try too, once again, feel free to speak up. Okay, I'm going to search for Olive Ridley Sea Turtle. And um, it automatically selects um, in library collection. Um, I'm going to uncheck that because, once again, doing that will allow me to better show one of the things I want to show. When other, other choices you can make, you can search uh, only for full text, you can search for peer reviewed articles, or you can search in SouthCAD only. But right now, we'll leave all those unchecked and we'll just search for keyword for Olive Ridley Sea Turtle and go search. Okay, and right away you see hello guests log in for full access. Um, actually, if you, anybody can come and, and do a search and look at the results. If you want to do anything more than this, then you have to log in. And um, I understand that many of you, um, the ones who are USA grad students already have your J numbers and your, um, your uh, passwords to log in. And some of you have already signed up for the extra ones too, the V numbers. So um, you uh, are going to want to do that. So I'll go ahead and sign in with my J number. And there it is right there in my password. Okay, and submit. And from now on, it's just like you were on campus. Um, and um, it'll give you full access to anything that's, um, that we have subscriptions to. Okay, so here's our result list and we have 669 items. Um, and once again, it's showing me the available in library collection, so I'm going to X that out. Um, the available in library collection means pretty much um, not, not specifically uh, physically present in the library, but anything we have a subscription to. But if you're trying to do a really, um, a really expansive search, like if you're um, working on a dissertation or a thesis, which you really want to get as much stuff as, as has been published, you don't want to limit your search like that. So we're going to unlimit it now. So. Um, as we go down the list, um, there's all different kinds of things. Um, that there's a couple of articles there. Um, here's a, um, a, a government document. Um, a couple of other things. Um, let's see. Okay. So if you see one um, that has, um, let's see, sea turtle. I'm going to say sea turtles. That might make a difference. Sea turtles. If you see one, um, most of the ones that have full, many of the ones that have full text available will have one of these links. And of course, that's easy. If you see that and you like that article, all you have to do is click there. There's your full text. Um, if you see one that looks like this, that has full text finder, um, that's one that's not uh, readily available through directly through EBSCO or, full, or OneSearch. But if you click there, it will show you um, if there's if there is full text available elsewhere. Um, it'll show you that uh, a link to that full text. If it doesn't, it'll show you this. Um, and this is a direct link to our, our interlibrary loan uh, program. Um, so um, if you click there um, and you have a login, you can fill out that login. I'll put mine. And what it will do is it will pull up a, a request form and automatically fill in the fields for that particular item. So all you have to do if, if, if you want to do an interlibrary loan for that request is um, sort of do a quick check to make sure um, it's right and then say submit request and it will go to our interlibrary loan people and they will find another library that does have it and borrow a copy of a book if it's a book or get you a, a, um, a photocopy or a digital copy of the article if it's an article. So um, I am going to close that out and go back to the result list and close that out and go back to the result list. Um, there was one, let's see, there was one for, um, yeah, there's, here's one for a, a journal article. So well, that's a bio one article. So that was, we actually, that's, and once again, you'll often find that we actually do have the full text for it. It was just within a, a direct link on the results page. So, uh, how about this one, full text finder? Okay, so we're going to interlibrary loan. And since I'm already signed in, it automatically fills out the form with the journal title, the volume number, the issue number, pages, and so forth. Um, and then, if I wanted it, I could just do submit request. And um, in a really, really quick time, actually, um, are we have. No, no exaggeration, we have the best interlibrary loan department in the state. 
maybe in more than one state, but ask, any, ask anybody in other light universities how fast they can get this stuff to them. We really do. So um, if you um, don't, don't despair, if it looks like something you really need, you don't have, we can probably almost certainly get it for you and probably pretty quickly. Um, so I'm going to close that out again. Whoops, didn't mean to do that. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so choose the first one, Mark's Library, Interlibrary Loan. Okay. Okay, um, and just a, a cu couple of quick things about OneSearch. Um, one of the nice things about OneSearch is that while you're looking at a, a big result, result set like this, um, you can, um, as you go along, you don't have to write down their things or, or type in notes. You can add them to folders. So if you see a couple that you like, you could just go through there and, and click on them. And that'll add it to a folder. And um, this is a, a, a temp folder that it adds to, so you can see your folder right there. You can also ha have permanent folders. To do that, you need to uh, make a sign-in through EBSCO. And this is different from the sign-in the, for the remote access. This is just for the EBSCO uh, databases. So you click sign-in. Even if you um, don't have a sign-in yet, go ahead and click that sign-in. Um, and if you don't have a sign-in, um, you can um, create one. But I, I do have one, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna do my sign in. Okay, and it'll take me back to the list of results. Okay, and um, well, see here, and, and um, as you can see, um, you can do um, more than one folder. So if you're working on several different projects, you can have a folder for each project if you want to. Um, and then everything you you, um, you add to the folders will stay in those folders until you delete them. Um, this is a really nice feature because we've had people. Hmm? I'd say you mean years because I had some six years ago. Yeah. You don't Yeah. And, and we, we've had people who were working in the library, researching merrily away, going through long lists of results, adding stuff to folders, and then closing the browser out and going away and coming back two days later. I want to see that folder full of stuff I just did. Well, sorry, it's gone. <laughs> you have to do the sign-in, the EBSCO sign-in, and, um, and, and do your folder that way. And that, that way, as Kathy says, it'll stay around for a long time. Okay. Um, so um, I'm going to go back. And then um, you can um, share that share button. Um, you can do, um, redo the search if you, with this persistent link. It's called, that's called, they call it a permalink. If you want to share that search with somebody else, um, that's the link that you need. Don't use the one at the top of the page because that's just a dynamic link. It'll go away. Um, but this one is, um, re will stay good indefinitely, and it'll, it'll it have be the equivalent of redoing that same search every time you, um, every time you uh, click on that, and you'll get that list of results again. And you can also set up um, um, alerts. So um, if you have a particular search that you want to rerun on a regular basis, you can set up alert, and it'll do it automatically and send you the results. So. And a lot of our databases, we have a lot of... Um, of uh, publishers' databases like ScienceDirect and Wiley, those have those. Um, they, you can do the reserve, uh, alerts for those too. Once again, you have to probably have to set up a, um, a, a free. It'll be a free account with that uh, with that uh, database. Okay. So, and once again, you can limit to just if you just want full text, or if you want just want scholarly article journals. That'll get rid of any book results or like that. Um, or if you just, although I, I can't imagine most of the people here are going to want just print books only, but you can do that if you want to. Um, and limit it to various types, academic journals, news, magazines, so forth. Or um, language. Um, if you're doing a search that's pulling up a lot of foreign language items that you can't read, you can limit to English. Okay. So that's, um, that's the, the quick and dirty introduction to OneSearch. Any, any questions or any problems anybody's had with it in the past that they want to complain about? Or? Okay. Um, it is, um, uh, uh, 
we don't, the, we don't charge you anything for it. If you want something that another library is going to charge us for, then we'll pass the charges on to you. But you get to okay that before we do that. Right. Oh. I, oh, that's right. I forgot. I see. That's why I brought Kathy along. <laughs> Okay, um, I talked to I talked to Debbie Cobb, who's our interlibrary and librarian, and she says if you graduated or if you've been away from the university, uh, if you've separate, formally separated from the university at some point, then you'll be disavowed. But if you're a, a, now currently a student in good standing, call them. Um, there's some contact information I'll show you in a minute. In fact, I'll show you right now. Um, call them and they can um, they can get you um, fixed up. So, so um, and this is all, that's, that's also I want to let you, any of you who don't have interlibrary loan accounts that you want them, um, this page here that says interlibrary loan information, um, if you haven't, um, if you want to set up an Iliad account, you can click on the first time user registration and do that here. And this also gives you the, um, the um, contact information. That's, that's their email address and that's their phone number. So just call them and they'll, they'll get you real quick a new, uh, new uh, account. And also another thing, another thing that happens is sometimes um, people forget they had an account already and they set up a new one. Or they've forgotten their password, so they, it's really easy to set up an account. So that instead of trying to figure out what the password is, um, because you can't reset it yourself, the interlibrary loan people have to do it for you. They just set up a new account. And then um, if the interlibrary loan people discover that, they'll merge the accounts. Um, so because that way, um, all your stuff that comes in will come to the same account. And you don't have to be checking three different accounts and maybe forget that the one you requested on is one of a different account. So they'll merge the accounts. And that way, somebody will try to log in and they can't. I don't know. Whether, so just uh, if, if you get that disavowed or um, it's, not, it's not logging on like you think it should, just do contact the interlibrary loan people. And um, if it does happen, they're only there 8 to 5, Monday through Friday. But if you happen to be needing something from them um, on a weekend or in the evening, um, send them an email note. Say you're trying to request a, um, an article and you have one of those problems, um, and, but you're still in a hurry. Uh, send them an email request um, saying what your, um, what your uh, name is and your J number and give them the information about the article you want. And they'll go ahead and fix up your account and send the, uh, put in the request for you. So you won't lose any time on getting that request in. Like I say, we have the best interlibrary loan people. Yes. Okay. Well, what, what I would do um, is instead of looking through one search, and this brings up another thing I wanted to show you all. Um, if you know the title of the journal it's in, instead of looking through the article title through one search, I would go to this list here, journal and ebook list, um, and put in the, the title of the journal. So for instance, um, what's the title? Let's say Herpetologica. Herpetological Review, I'll choose that one. And that will tell you um, if we have full text access to it. And it will give you the link to, um, to the uh, database that, ha that has it. So and it will tell you um, if you're, like say you, um, your article was, um, was published in 2016. That's 2013 to, to current, so it would be in there. Um, if it looks like it's older than that, um, like here's an open access journal, then as long as it's after 1969, it would be in that listing. And also, if we have, we still have, we don't have a whole lot of print journals anymore. But if we, if it was in one of the print journals, that would take you to the, our catalog record for that journal. Okay. 
So um, once again, rather than searching on one search, if you have a, if you have a known article that you want to find and, and you do know the journal title, look for the journal, not the article title, but look for the journal title on this journal and ebook list. Right. Right. Okay. Thank you. That brings me to my next uh, to talking about um, the best using Google Scholar to best effect to get access to stuff that um, you find that we actually own. So, um, but to get there, I am going to um, go to this list here called this choice here called Course and Subject Guides. Um, this um, is a um, this is a, a service that we subscribe to called LibGuides, and it's sort of a, a, a modular uh, guide creation um, thing that we, um, we, we use to make um, really specialized guides. Um, I put one together for uh, marine sciences, so I'm going to go down here under marine sciences. And there's a couple here. There's one for environmental studies and one for math marine sciences, so I'm going to choose marine sciences. And um, each page you see has these boxes. Um, I set this up so uh, some, some links to internet resources and this uh, Science Daily. This is a news feed for oceanography news. Um, and a bunch of quick links over here about the uh, library. Um, but if you go and, and under journals, I chose some um, just journals that look to me like they are useful for marine sciences. And also finding articles. And this is a, a list of, um, of databases. It includes the journal ebook list that we we're just talking about. And then down here under um, all uh, databases that, that um, uh, I think will be useful for marine sciences or related things, biological abstracts, uh, science direct, SciFinder Scholar, if you're chemistry uh, thing, JSTOR, and a couple of others. And down here, here's a link to Google Scholar. So um, we'll do our Oliver Ridley Sea Turtle again, search. Um, and um, what you can do to make sure you, um, you don't try to, to pay for or request an interlibrary loan for a, a journal we already have, you can set it so that it'll show you um, the ones that we have. And the way you do that is you go to the settings and you choose library links and then you um, put um, University of South Alabama Library. Okay, so um, the University of South Alabama Libraries, uh, Full Text at USA, and you're, well, I'm going to choose both of those, and um, say Save. And now you see on the right-hand side, it gives you that link, um, as well as the direct link to the um, the uh, uh, journal database. So, um, and I would recommend you always use the um, the full, especially when you're off campus, like you like we are here. Always use the full text link because even though you can go directly, um, let me see if I can find an example for one next. I always set this up so I, I know what's going to come up, and then it does something completely off the wall and looks different. But, um, but anyway, some, um, I, I've done this before, and it showed me some Wiley links and some Science Direct links. And even though you, you, uh, technically you can link on that and go to the Science Direct or Wiley site, I would still recommend you use the full text at USA site, because that will take you to the, um, the, um, the page like we saw before that gives you the, the results. And then um, it'll give you the link to the, the full text of the publisher site. And the advantage to using this is it uses our proxy server prefix. So um, if, you, if you just clicked on, to go directly to like the science director, the Wiley site, or another site, um, and, it, and you don't, use, don't go through the proxy server, it won't recognize your IP address, and it'll tell you you don't have access. Um, this does use the IP address. Um, and then um, if you haven't already logged in, I've already logged in, so it's not going to it's not going to give me that list. But um, if you hadn't already logged in, it'll take you first to the login screen for the proxy server, and you use that um, that uh, your J number, or if you're one of the people who um, have, 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 are, are only affiliated, the V number that you've already signed up for, and your password. And from then on, um, you'll be logged in through the proxy server, and you can see everything, um, have access to everything that we've subscribed to. Correct. Correct. Right. Yeah. 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 Um, if you look at, um, if you go back to the, um, 
the database and e-reference, and you go to Google. If you signed up there, then that'll do that. It, it doesn't always work, though. For instance, um, it says here um, uh, some browsers, including Chrome, won't let you do that. So, but if you have yeah, if you if you have done that, then if you logged in through Google Scholar, then you're home free. Like see. Okay. Okay. Um, let's see. Okay. Um, okay, ebooks. Um, we're, um, we're the last few years. Um, Marine Sciences has a, a what we call an allocation. All, the, all our departments have an allocation that they can spend for books for the library. Marine Sciences has one, and our very own Kelly Dorgan, yeah, uh -huh, um, does that. Um, so um, in the last couple of years, we've been buying ebooks almost exclusively, so that you don't have to be physically present in the library to read them. You can get them online, and there's a couple of different ways to get to those ebooks. Um, you can use our catalog, um, and you can limit um, you, you can limit to um, electronic books, and do your search. And all the books you find will be um, online. And you just click on the title, and there will be a link to that, um, that database where that book is located. And there it is. Okay. And then um, other ways you can find it is, once again, you go to the, if you happen to know the title of the book you want, you can go to the journal ebook list and um, search for the title. And you can also do a, um, it, it searches for the title. So you can sort of do a rough keyword search here as long as your keywords are in the title of the book. So if you do um, sea turtles, and it'll, it'll, it'll uh, give you all sorts of suggestions. So these are all books that have the sea turtle somewhere in the title. So whether it's not, even if you can't remember the exact title, you, you happen to you know that it does have sea turtles in it, and it's an ebook, it'll pull it up here. Um, and this is not, um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't conclude, because you don't find it in this list, that we don't have it, because it's not perfect, but it's a good start. Um, and you might find something else you need. And you can also do browsing, um, browse by discipline, so say you're like oceanography, but this is going to mainly be the, the journals that we have for it. But you can sort of browse if you want to look and see what's been published um, in a particular journal, Applied Ocean Research, say. You can go there and it'll give you, you can choose the, the table of contents for the um, issue you want and it'll take you there. Okay. 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 Let's see. Okay. Um, other things. Um, okay. Um, if you have any problems with the remote access, you can you can send me a message, um, and I'll, I'll I'll either answer fix the problem with myself or figure out who can um, and direct you to them or or, or get them up to help you. Um, if you just uh, if it's a time when I'm not there, um, you can send do this remote access FAQ, and this has a lot of um, of problems that we've encountered before. Kathy put this together mostly, or so you can see there's her, her smiling face. Um, um, and all these are tabs of, of specific like, types of screens, we've uh, particular types of problems we've encountered, and um, uh, what causes that, and uh, how you can, what you can do to fix it. Um, so once again, suspended accounts. Um, uh, you might encounter that sometimes if you, if you do a lot of downloading in a short amount of time, it's, it automatically shuts you down. But Well, I think it's four hours now, but, but yeah, yeah. So, 
So, but in, anyway, if, 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 you're, if you're late at night, you're doing it, and you come to a, that standstill, and you think, well, heck, I'll just go to bed, and you wake up in the morning, it'll, everything will be fine. You'll be, your, your account will be restored. Uh, you probably need the sleep anyway. Okay. Okay. Um, let's see. Can you think of anything else I've forgotten, Kathy, that I should mention? But we have a couple that it's the only place that we can, the only vendor we can get the ebook from, and they do have digital rights management on them. We try not to buy those unless we absolutely have to. But what that means is you need to download another piece of software, which is Adobe Digital Editions. Amy shows you the libguides. There's the um, there's one for um, <coughs> ebooks. Do search for the books. And there's all kinds of tips on how to use our various ebook things. Um, do the ACLS command in this one. No, no, okay. But take the hyphen out because I don't do the hyphen when I do ebooks. Okay, the one that says ebooks using Mark's library, ebooks with e readers, the first one, click on that. And over here where it says ebook collection tips, it's the second to the last one on the top thing. Those are the very small um, ebook collections that we have. The ones that use the digital rights management are EBSCO and the one that says EBL, which is. Um, Proplus ebook um, vendor. Um, and there's tips on there on how to download Adobe Digital Editions and how to use it. And if you run across a book like that, go there and pick it up. But most of them are going to be simple, they're just PDFs, but you will encounter some of that one. So I wanted you to know what to do about them. Okay. Um, and on that subject, this is a good adoption for textbooks. So you know, if you have a class and you're required to buy a textbook, that would be a really good book to ask me to request in free ebook form from the library, and I will add it to the list. Um, and the same with faculty, if you plan on using a textbook, um, if you can let me know, you know as soon as you think you might use it, I'll put it on the list and see if you can get it added to the ebook list. Most libraries will let us buy books individually like that, but there is one that one, and that's spring. And I don't know how much you guys use Springer. But Springer would have to buy their in their big packages of ebooks. So if you request the book and Springer's the only one, we probably cannot get it without buying the entire package. And those packages are really expensive. They're like one of the ones we looked at was Springer is sixty thousand dollars. So they're really expensive. Um, the individual ebooks we can afford a little bit more. But you know, Springer, Springer is, um, is good because they will send us lists of books that are get used to uh, that we already have access to that get used a lot as e as textbooks. Springer so. is actually a really cool vendor. I like them a lot because they provide you with um, you can download chapters if you want. You can also download the full book in one place if you want. But if you're a print person, you like print books more than you like ebooks. Springer. Is pretty cool. If we have bought the um, electronic book, anybody who is affiliated with us can buy the print book for twenty-five dollars. It does not matter how expensive that book is. It's going to cost you actually, I think, twenty-four ninety-nine. You know, they couldn't just say flat out twenty-five. But so, if you like print and it's a book we own, that's an option. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, anybody have any questions about anything we've talked about, or any problems you've had in the past, or any complaints? Or okay. Okay. Um, well, like Kelly mentioned, we're going to stick around for a while after the um, after lunch, um, and um, feel free to come by and uh, ask any particular questions or um, have help with any problems you've encountered. And also, 
I have. I put down um, a pile of stack of my um, uh, business cards if you want to take one, and also some, um, some bookmarks with quick um, information about the library. Um, one thing those bookmarks don't mention, though, is our, new, our new, newest and most shiny um, asset, which is our learning commons. Um, which is a space if you ever come to the to the campus and want a space to hang out and um, uh, do some research and um, talk to your friends and you can bring uh, food and drink in there and um, there's a, a display um, a Gotti um, a display um, monitors you can throw stuff up on and all kinds of stuff um, to use um, and also of course don't forget we have a Starbucks in the library now so you can um, caffeinate and get a snack too right there in the library and you can break it anywhere in the library you want so okay okay well I thank you for letting me and come and talk to you today we love to help people use the library resources and we want them to get as much out of it as they can so. any questions if you're having any issues um, access it like all of the login things that you saw if you weren't able to log in on all of those things um, maybe we can stick around for a few minutes here if you just have a quick question or you can come by the, the conference room um, you know we'll go to lunch so we'll be there Course and subject guides, okay. and then, then just go down to marine sciences. And actually, probably it's on a lot of these lib guides, subject lib guides. Um, and you go to finding articles. And there's the oh. Thank you so okay. much. Thank you.